Where will Jamaica be in 2030? In 2013, when the Planning Institute of Jamaica commenced implementation of the Government of Jamaica Adaptation Fund program, it was articulating a new vision for the Jamaican population. Jamaica has a healthy, natural environment. The PIOJ was also sensitizing Jamaicans about the critical importance of preserving the natural environment, emphasizing the need to reduce the island's vulnerability to natural hazards and to climate change. It was a fitting context for the introduction of this important climate change project by the Adaptation Fund to the largest English-speaking nation in the Caribbean. Many Jamaicans can relate to the message of climate change adaptation because of their experiences with devastating hurricanes and prolonged droughts. Dr. Wayne Henry, the Director General of the Planning Institute of Jamaica, offers a context of the impact of climate change on the Jamaican economy. For Jamaica, over the last 17 years, we've seen some 126 billion Jamaican dollars in damage just under 1% of GDP in terms of damage cost. And, and if we are not careful, if we, don't, if we do nothing, it's, it's, it's expected to intensify and the damage will be much more severe. The primary purpose of the Government of Jamaica Adaptation Fund program is to protect livelihoods. It has done so for over four years by improving land and water use management by hundreds of small farmers in vulnerable communities all over Jamaica helping them to significantly increase their yields and earnings. The GOJ Adaptation Fund program has functioned under a program steering committee comprising stakeholders drawn from the Jamaican government, the private sector, as well as from the NGO and international development community to pursue initiatives to strengthen coastal protection, to promote awareness and build capacity in stakeholder organizations and communities for climate change adaptation. The program's funding of climate smart farming best practices has been lauded by Jamaica's Ministry of Agriculture and its Rural Agricultural Development Authority. In 2016, the Permanent Secretary in the Agriculture Ministry, Donovan Stanbury, described the program as a game changer for Jamaican agriculture. This headline in one of the local newspapers validated his claim and documented the program's contribution to Jamaica's drive to replace onion exports with local produce grown in large measure in government of Jamaica agroparks. Sometimes it has to do with what others do, but we're living in a global village. So it's excellent that the international community is looking on the plights of, of people that might seem so distant in, in some of these districts, Hindstone, Blackstone Hedge, Hedge, Mackney, some of those places that I myself as a Jamaica don't even know. But we are seeing the local impact of a global project. And we have to thank the Adaptation Fund for that. Beyond the macro impact of the GOJ Adaptation Fund program, the real essence of success is captured in the lives of hard-working, resilient Jamaican farmers like Alton and Eulalie Lee, who rise at the dawn of every day to meet and to prevail against the challenges of climate change. This 28-year-old farmer, Lawrence Lynch, who grew over 20,000 pounds of onions on his one-acre plot in one planting cycle at one of the agroparks in eastern Jamaica or the inspirational story of Ivan Donna Budraham, who has blossomed into a successful farmer and business owner under the GOJ Adaptation Fund program. Claire Bernard is the Deputy Director General of the PIOJ with responsibility for sustainability projects in Jamaica. When she reflects on the impact and legacy of the GOJ Adaptation Fund program, she thinks of Donna's enterprise and industry from a farmer like Donna, who knows, understands that climate change is not some theoretical construct, but something which she experiences and which she can put things in place to adapt to. 
So to help her to understand the simple, even in a simple way, the science behind what's happening in the natural environment, to that natural phenomenon, and how, as a person, she can, for want of a better word, take dominion of what is happening around her. So for me, that kind of, that the knowledge gained and the demonstration of the knowledge gained would for me be an important legacy. For, for climate change, the agriculture sector is a low hanging fruit. This project has also empowered the, some of the communities and some of the farming communities and given them probably the voice that was required to say yes, this is what we are experiencing, this is where we want to go and also to, to, to enable them or engender them to take care of their own development. And I think this is, I think, one of the, the great benefits of this project, that it operated at the community level, in communities where lives were being impacted, and especially the lives of the farmers. I really want also to say um, thanks a bunch to all those who have contributed um, to the program. And I know that now that we have the Paris Agreement and there are other modalities of financing, that there will nonetheless still be a place for the Adaptation Fund. And I want to encourage um, contributor countries to keep putting resources to the Adaptation Fund. It's an experiment that has worked and one that has benefited um, people in small island developing states. So thanks, AF. The Adaptation Fund and Jamaica working together to build resilience and to adapt to the vagaries of climate change and in so doing, breaking the tide and renewing the land for a sustainable future.